Consequently, such definitions by the Roman pontiff are irreformable. Now, it was Bishop Joseph Strothmeyer of the 19th century described in the Catholic Encyclopedia as one of the great opponents of papal infallibility. He pointed out that some popes had even opposed other popes. Specially mentioned is of how Pope Stephen VI brought former Pope Formosus of 891 to trial. Now, this is out of the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 14, page 316. The famous story of the Pope bringing another one to trial is of sheer horror, for Pope Formosus had been dead for eight months. Nevertheless, his body was brought from the tomb and placed upon a throne. There before a group of bishops and cardinal, the former Pope, dressed in rich apparels of papacy, was tried. Now, as the trial got underway, the stench of his body filled the assembly hall. Now, he was proven guilty and charged, and his body was dragged through the street left behind a cart in the city for days and then finally cast into the Tiber River. Now, thus, one pope condemning another pope doesn't show infallibility. Then a short time later, the Catholic Encyclopedia pointed out that the second successor of Stephen had his body, which was taken from the Tiber River and given full honors in St. Peter's Square, reinstituted to the point of ownership. Now, isn't today's pope going down to India and calling all those people brothers? Those people don't even believe in Christ. Isn't he making a mistake by calling calling them our brothers? Now, there's so many other examples. Think, can a man make mistakes? Why, sure. Examine Pope Eugene IV, who condemned Joan of Arc to be burnt alive as a witch. Later, another pope, Pope Benedict IV of 1919, declared her to be a saint. Now, when we consider the hundreds and times and ways that the popes have contradicted each other over the century, we can understand how the idea of papal infallibility is difficult for many people to accept. Now, you might have your own definition of papal infallibility in the Immaculate Conception, but that's not what the Church believes. Therefore, you are supporting the Church by simply being there. Now, popes have taken to themselves such titles as Most Holy Lord, Chief of the Church in the World, World, sovereign Pontiff of Bishops, High Priest, the Mouth of Christ, Vicar of God, Vicar of Christ and others. Now Pope Leo the 13th on June 20th, 1894 says, we hold upon the earth the place of God Almighty. Now during the Vatican Council of 1870 on J January 9th, it was proclaimed that the Pope is Christ in office, Christ in jurisdiction and power, and we bow down before thy voice, O pious, this is that Pope. Now, as the same thing as bowing down before the voice of Christ. But a historical sketch that we have plainly shows that the Pope is nothing like Christ, even in office. The contrast is apparent. The very expensive crowns worn by the Popes have cost millions of dollars. Jesus, during his earthly crown, wore no crown except a crown of thorns. The Pope is waited on by servants. What a contrast to the lowly Nazarene who came not to, min to be ministered to, but to minister. Now, the immorality of many popes, especially in the past century, stands in sharp contrast to Christ, who in perfect in holiness and purity showed the real way of being a servant. Now, when turning to the book of Revelation, in the Catholic Bible also, we find in Revelations 13, verses 18, here is wisdom. He who has understanding, let him calculate the number of the beast, for the number is the number of a man, and its number is six. 666. That is the mark of a man, the mark of the beast. Now, in view of these things, we believe that the claim that the Pope is the Vicar of Christ is without any basis in fact. Now, in examining the Morris Code, every letter has a number. When translating into Latin, which was the prominent language of the Roman Catholic Church, Vicar of Christ, in Latin, Vicar of Christ adds up to 666. Now, it should be pointed out although in all fairness, that various names and titles, depending on how they are written and in different language, produce this number. Now, the examples given here are, are of special interest because they are linked with Rome, the old Roman Empire, and Roman Catholicism. 
The very Roman Empire of olden days is nothing but Rome today. And the Roman Empire had only six numbers. Now examine this. D, C, L, X all add up to 666. Now it was Nero who was one of the greatest Christian persecutors of the day. His name, written in Hebrew, it adds up to 666. The Greek letters for the word Latinos, or Latin, which was the historical language of Rome and the church adds up to 666. Now turning to the Bible itself in the Old Testament, we read that King Solomon each year received 666 talents of gold. Now this wealth played an important part in leading him astray. In the New Testament, the letters for the Greek word euporia, for which the word wealth is translated, total of 666. Out of the 2,000 Greek nouns in the New Testament, there's only one other word, paradosia, and it also translated as tradition adds up to 666. Wealth and tradition, interestingly enough, were the two great corruptors of the Romish church. Wealth corrupted in practice and honesty, and traditions corrupted in doctrine. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always, to the very end of the age. I am sending you to open their eyes, and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. <laughs>